All right, next we're going to look at a couple more examples of how we can uh, solve for x and things like this for quadratics. So here you go is another example. Uh, the reason we can solve for x, obviously, is because there's just one variable. So we'll go ahead and subtract 25 from both sides. When you do that, you'll get 9x squared is equal to negative 25. We'll then go ahead and divide both sides by 9. And you'll get x squared is equal to negative 25 ninths. And then lastly, to get rid of the square root, or the square, we can take the square to both sides. Our answer, of course, like I said, anytime you're solving for x and you uh, take the square root, your answer is going to be plus or minus. Uh, we do have a nice little radical here. So because our radicand is negative, we're going to have an i involved, so plus or minus i. And one of the properties of radicals is a nice little quotient rule which says that you can take the square to the top and the bottom. So what we'd have is we have uh, plus or minus 5 thirds of i on this one. All right, one more example. Uh, again, we can solve for x in uh, this right here. This one's pretty important to us because when you're actually doing a different method called completing the square, your problem usually looks like this. So we can solve for x because there's only one. Uh, there's no sense in us multiplying it out, setting it equal to zero, and using another method. As long as you just have one variable, you can solve for that one variable. So we'll take the square root first, and we get plus or minus the square root of 6. If I could have simplified that, I would need to, but obviously square root of 6 is not a perfect square, nor are there any perfect squares that go into it. And then lastly, I will go ahead and add 2 to both sides. So I get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. So that's it.